Good evening, and welcome to BTWN VidCast. My name is Ted, and I'm t I'm on live tonight, and I'm joined by Kurt Moe and our special guest, Steve Brooker. On a more negative note, I'm being held against my own will. Will somebody please call the cops? Please call the cops. Quick, call the cops. He's dead. <laughs> Not there. Oh, man. I'm back. Ugh. So that that is pretty much the easiest way I can ever see that I'm never gonna have to interview um, <laughs> introduce the show. It's a qu kind of awkward thing to introduce the show for me and Kate because what happens is I normally say two minutes before the show, Kate, you introduce. We don't write it down. It never works. So no, it goes that, like two minutes to say, Steve. I'd be like, uh, Mo, you gotta do. You're doing the intro. And neither of us more like, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> so, that's probably the that's easiest fun. way. To do it. Best way to do it. Let's use a teddy bear. <laughs> Not in that way. Not in that way. Jesus. Anywho, right, perfect. Back on. Another weekend, another week since a show's been aired. A lot's happened. A lot's happened for me, and a lot's happened for Kate. Kate, what's new with you? Kate's gone deaf. <laughs> Oh, it's his cake on. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, if you if you don't get your microphone, can you speak a second? Okay, right. I'm gonna make your news up for you then. That's the easiest answer. I'm snow, make... snow, and lots of snow. Yeah. Snowed. My yeah. apologies, guys. I there didn't you are. realize I had to unplug it and plug it back in. I'm sorry. Oh my god, you're an American? I thought that all you ever used to do was if something doesn't work, you unplug it and plug it back in. <laughs> Society for you guys. Well, anyway, just because I can, I want to meet. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we got Steve Brooker on him, he's muting himself right now. Uh, and then he yeah. unmuted, he's muted. Yeah, he's unmuted. I hate oh, you. Steve, let's kick it off. I'll okay. fix it. There you go. Right, okay, now back to Kate's news. Um, I'm going to make it slightly easy. Kate was abducted, unfortunately, by uh, a Yeti. A pack of Yetis got him and used him and absolutely destroyed him. He came back yesterday. He's had to go to the hospital and get checked over. Um, <coughs> he's, he's pregnant, unfortunately, with a little Yeti baby inside him. He got used. He went out in the snow yesterday. For all that, for all that, unfortunately, we're not privy to the information. Kate went out yesterday to do some filming in the snow around his area and decided to check out the local shopping area for Yeti. Shop. Okay, there must be a punchline somewhere. So he went to the shopping area and um, something happened. He tried to do a snow angel and when he got up, he got jumped on and accosted by lots of hairy creatures at well and truly, um, used them. <laughs> Kate, can uh, you speak? Can you, can, can you, I, can you I, elaborate? I, I, my lawyer told me don't say a word about it right now, and the constable said definitely don't say a word about it because they're looking into it right there. Um, all of a sudden, I just heard the last name Gunnery being echoed out, and then it was really freaking me out. And I spent a couple nights in the uh, nut hatch <coughs> because of it. But but the gunnery thing just flipped me out to no end, dude. Scared the hell out of me. Oh, That's all I gotta what? say. But and, dude, I know why I, they said gunnery. I know what it is because you're the closest thing to this type of attraction. They just went for you. No, but it's the hairy face, dude. When they asked me to do a, a an actual, you know, a sketch, you know, of what my attackers looked like. Yeah. The first two were real hairy. And then the third one looked like he was in a boy band, but he only stood five foot four inches tall. So I really, I didn't know. I'm not five foot four. I did not want to blame Mo for that. So I kept, I kept Mo, I kept Mo out of it, so he would not be blamed for part of the attack. It was Steve. It was embarrassing. It was humiliating. I hope you you run out the food. And Mo is about 15, 20 stone to top it off. Okay. I hope. I hope you run out of food and have to eat your neighbours like they did in that film alive. You're gonna eat that with, like far eastern gentleman upstairs. You're gonna have to eat him. Oh, dude, I can't. I do, 
I, okay, let's kick it on, man. Let's kick it off. Oh, dear God. So, anyway, what really happened for you this week, Kate? Dude, you just... Honestly, Steve Brooker, that's what happened. I went out one night. Here's what happened. And the story goes, I went out one night. It was a ghost town. Bars were closed, and, you know, and I'm walking around with my cell phone, showing things and all that. So I decided to say, ha-ha, I'll put it on Facebook, yada, yada, yada. Next thing you know... Next, <laughs> ne ne next, next thing you know. I'm gonna um, kill Teddy. Ne next thing you know, um, I get see this BT intro to BTW breaking news, and then there's scroll up saying I've been Whoa. sexually assaulted by a yeti, and it was like I was in tears laughing, and I was like, there's no way I'm gonna I can get him back from that. There's no way that was too good. Do you so know what the worst part was, though? Ah, I'm not pregnant, though, dude. No, I the, the worst part I did the part bee stick. About... I did the bee stick. Wasn't pregnant. The worst part about it was, though, people actually believed something had happened to Kate, you know. Did they really? <laughs> yeah, people on Facebook were asking if you're okay. <laughs> dude, just say no. Just say no. He's not he's okay. Nice. He's dead. Okay, it's gone. It's over. He's dead. I'm, 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 I, I was shredded. But Steve, actually, actually, man, it was we got nailed with snow, and you're getting, and, and Mo's gonna actually get it next. Same storm, but in rain format. Yeah, I was but to say uh, the snow just melted. Oh God, I wish it was here melted. All right, Mo, how's your week, dude? Oh, dude, my my week was kind of weird. I had a mad working week, but um, I decided yesterday, not no, the day before yesterday, I decided to go for a little walk into town. Um, We've got like big scary old buildings and I've, I've got this fascination with photography, nothing paranormal in any way, shape or form. I just went and took um, about 90 shots of this big cathedral got in Liverpool city centre and came home on Friday, moved all the photos over and because because I use a DSLR, the photographs are huge. So it took me <coughs> maybe 20 minutes to move them over and then I started trying to edit them. And every single photograph I took was an absolute pile of crap. You know, when you look at something and think, I have wasted a day. Do you know the only good thing from that entire trip to the cathedral was was the coffee. That was all I got from it. The coffee and a wasted battery. I was human. Coffee's but, good. Caffeine. Why yeah. not? You know? I also found the creepy teddy bear that talks to me. <laughs> He's a new friend. Dude, that thing's creepier than the Yeti, dude. I'll be honest. He's messed up, you know. He's like sort of, oh, yes, he's weird. Do you know he's what? Scouse creepy, dude. He's scouse creepy, man. Yeah, he robbed me. The, it's kind of weird. I don't know, man. As long as you don't get robbed, we're all good, dude. Teddy bear's walking around with a smartwatch on. I'm just, uh, do you know, it's it's weird though. It's when you look, and again, a slight segue into the paranormal. You look at some of the things that are out in the paranormal at the moment, and some of the electronic equipment that's out there, and you realize people are retrofitting it for a purpose, and people are buying special Furbies, for instance. I always wanted to get a Furby. That was my main thing. Buy a Furby. Because it's got some form of sensor built into it. Look into the sensor and see what the hell I could get it to do. And then I realized it's not that simple with a fairy. When you get it, you've got to train it to talk or some crap like that. I did it. I did it. Oh, dude, I can barely I teach it. my kids not to swear. How the hell am I going to teach a fairy? <laughs> it's a joke. It's abusive. But nevertheless, that's enough about my debauchery of a week um, <coughs> starting again this week. And more importantly, um, main stage is our friend Steve Booker. Hello. Hi guys. What is new with you, sir? We, for, oh, before we go any further, for people who are, are not aware, Steve, me and Kurt, we go back a few years to pre-vidcast and to back to the good old radio times and yep. again, lovely acquaintance to have. <laughs> and do you know what? Of all the people who ever come on here, we get some smiles, they're always fake smiles. He get, he's got this warm smile. It's sort of, you're like, ah. Oh, I'm glad you're here now. Let me. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem, man. Uh, but nevertheless. Brilliant. So what's new? What's new? What's new? Um, well, as I said um, a few days ago, um, one of the, one of the things that I've been meaning to do for a long, long, long time, um, and this goes back probably a good, perhaps even a good ten years, um, but I discussed it um, several years back uh, with you know people within groups. Um, it's been discussed with. A few people that that are, I won't name names, but they are people that you know, and they're up there. You know, they they're in a league of their own. But um, the, the the subject was um, of regression to 
a past incident that happened to me. Okay, it was 31 years ago, 1982. Um, and th that's where that discussion uh, took place in as far as um, finding someone to do it. Now, I found someone to do it. Um, you know, I went through the local papers. I found um, various people that, that were involved in, um, in counselling people to stop smoking, stop drinking, you know, the normal sorts of things that those people might do. Um, but I didn't want that. I wanted someone to take this on board that was, that was part of a paranormal group or a, yeah. a society as such. Um, to have it recorded and to have it documented because it is true. I wouldn't put myself on the line and have myself regressed in front of people to find out that nothing happened. You know, yeah. okay, th there is always the possibility that they can't get that from me. But hey, if you don't try, you're not, where are you going to get to if you don't try? Exactly. So that was, that was my main topic for today. Um, and like I said, I'm not going to name names. Um, it's not been... Um, it's not been finalised yet, but when it, when it does get finalised, obviously, I'll let you guys know. And then um, if we can get it videoed and, and audioed, hey, that'll make a great show. But, definitely, um, definitely. I mean, if you want me to go back over that, I'm, I'm quite willing to go back back over that. If possible, yeah. could you go back for the viewers that are watching at the moment? And all Absolutely. as well, sorry, for all the people who are, in the, who are watching at the moment, if you jump to the right-hand side of the page on YouTube, um, there's a chat bar. If you are watching on your mobile phone, at the bottom it says live chat. Tap the button and obviously get involved in the chat. But nevertheless, if you want to go over what happened in 1982 for all the people who are not aware of what did happen. Yeah, please. sure. Okay. From the from the beginning then. Um, so, 1982, uh, I was 17 years old. Um, I was with my then girlfriend, whose name was Jane, uh, her best friend, Audra my best mate from school from years and years ago, Darren, and his mate Dave. Um, Darren had um, a blue Mark One Escort. Now, Mo would remember that. Kurt would never have a clue what we're talking about. Um, Kurt's idea of a car is a big sack of sports, whereas a Mark One <laughs> Escort is a real car. <laughs> Just saying. And um, Jane and Audra lived um, in Shepparton. I lived in Ashford, and the incident took place in Leyland. It's about halfway between both of the towns. Not very far, a couple of miles from Ashford into Laylam and then a couple of miles into Shepparton. Laylam is on the water. I mean, again, there's a lot of history um, behind Laylam. Uh, there was an abbey there, you know, many, many years ago. Uh, part of King Henry VIII stomping ground because he was down from Windsor. But anyway, that, that's not the issue. Um, so that particular night, it was a, a normal night for us. Um, I didn't drive at the time, I had a motorbike. But Darren used to come around, pick me up. Um, we would go around, pick up the girls in Shepparton, and we just used to drive around. You know, you did at 17 years old. <clears throat> That's all you did, yeah. drive around. Um, obviously, at this point in time, I have to <laughs> reiterate that there was no drugs involved and there was no alcohol involved. You know, mm. I, I wasn't, I mean, there was nothing like that at all. So put that record straight. Um, Leyland for us was a, a known spot. Um, it was known. Um, for various reasons. Um, it's a park, there's a swing, uh, you know, set up, uh, children's playground area at the front. But we, always, we, we used to use it in the evening because it was dark and secluded. Yes. So, you know, I mean, you know, one of the reasons why you go down there with, with your girlfriend in a car. But, you um, creep. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so it, it was Friday night, October, uh, first week or second week in October, wherever it was. And um, we'd done the normal, we picked up the girls at like seven o'clock, um, gone into Staines, driven around Ashford, Staines, um, all around the area. And we used to normally drop the girls back uh, around midnight, 12.30, something like that. So we'd come into, um, in, into Ashford through Leyland and we parked up in the road we'd normally park up in. This particular area um, is not far from the water. It's probably about uh, a, a quarter of a mile to the water and you're in a big open space uh, it's all tree lined it's, it's quite a big open space i'd say as big as um probably twice the size of a football pitch ish not square you know sort of a roundy shape and um there's a road that runs straight down the middle of it on the right hand side uh, if you're looking down towards the water on the right hand side uh, there's a little laid off section of, of grass there's a brick wall you go behind that, there's some more laid off grass, another brick wall. At the front towards the road, you've got a children's play area. It's still there, it was 
you know, it was there 30 years ago, it's still there now, slightly changed. The, the, the general layout has not changed. Uh, the only thing that's gone is a couple of the trees. So we came into that, it was just, almost just midnight. We parked up and I was in the back of the car. I had Jane to my left and Audra to the right. Uh, Darren was driving, Dave's in the front. And it's pitch black. I mean, that's the only way I can describe it. It is pitch black around there. Um, the moon was definitely up. And if, if I'm now facing the water, so that the car is facing down towards the water, although you can't see the water, the, the moon would have been probably uh, around about 10, 11 o'clock. Not very high, just above the trees, possibly. So the, there was a little bit of light, but, but not a huge amount. The incident then was that directly to my left um, is the open space. And in that open space, in them days, there was three trees. The biggest one being to the left, slightly smaller in the middle, and then a smaller one to the far end towards the wall, back end of the old, what people would know as the old monastery. Yeah. So not a very high wall, you know, perhaps eight foot tall. I was suddenly looking out of the window and there's this huge big old oak tree. And the only way I always describe it, perhaps is a little bit too intense, but if you imagine um, the old World War uh, two searchlights, the big sods. Yeah. If you had that literally on top of the tree, pointing down, that's what I saw. The the, the tree just lit up like a like a Christmas tree almost, pure white light. But yet, and this is the stupid thing about it is that nobody else could see that, and that's why I got out of the car. I had to get out of the car because it was just there was something not right, mm -hmm. as you do. <laughs> I got out of the car. Yeah. So, um. To the tree, we're talking no more than full 35, 40 yards, possibly, not even that. And yeah. I had, um, all of this is relevant later on. I had a white jumper on and I had uh, you know, sort of light blue jeans, but the white jumper is fairly significant. I walked all the way down towards the tree. The tree was still bright white. You could, even, even when I was less than, 20 foot from the trunk of the tree, you could clearly see the shadow, um, the black shadow around the circular white light on the bottom of the tree. And there's even a bench that was slightly offset to the right hand side, a little two seater bench. And, and that was clearly in the light, it was bright white. So I walked behind the tree, uh, I did stop, um, and well, I didn't stop, but I did look around about halfway to the tree to see if anyone got out of the car, but no one followed me, no one got out of the car. So I walked behind the tree. Um, I probably spent nothing more than four or five, six seconds behind the tree and the light just went out like someone had just switched it off. So I, I stood there maybe, again, three or four seconds and just thought, okay, th that was wrong. That was, <laughs> that was wrong. You know, I didn't know what was going on. So I walked back round and again, almost identical path that, that I'd come from back towards the car. I'd got probably within about, I'd say, two car lengths from the car itself. And I could see Jane, I could see Audra looking out the back window, could clearly see um, Dave looking out the front window. Yeah. And the car pulled away. <clears throat> I mean, not, not shot off, but it pulled away. And the, the instinct there was that they were just playing. They would just play with me, you know. They see me walk up towards the car and they drove off. Everyone's had that done to them, you know, mucking around. So I followed the car. I, again, I wasn't running, I just walked. Um, it, the car stopped, like I said, it drove off, it stopped. And then it moved off again. It moved off and it stopped a bit further down. And at that point, I'd stopped walking and I just watched it. It, it pulled off again and this time it stopped but it didn't actually physically stop. I saw the brake lights go on and then it just shot off. And I mean, he took off at some knots. He went down the end of the road and then you turn right and it takes you out onto the, onto the other slip road. So if you can imagine, you've got a major road, the river and a slip road that runs parallel on the right hand side. It's not very far, not a huge distance. So I stood there for a couple of seconds. Like I say, I'm in pitch black. There's nothing around. There's no street lights. You can't see the street lights from where you are. 
So at that point, I walked across into the what I call the laid to lawn section. It's only about, um, I'd say, 40 foot, 30 foot wide max, and then into the park. Into the park, and now I'm um, on the park. There's flood lit, it's all street lights, and I sat in the swings. And I heard Darren, because uh, again, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about, uh, Mo, in as far as he had a cherry bomb exhaust on the back of the Escort. You could hear him for yeah. miles. For people who realise what a cherry bomb exhaust is, it's what you'd expect on a wagon fit onto a little small car. Yeah, huge. It's really loud, really loud. And of course, uh, at midnight in the middle of nowhere, you could hear that for a long way. So, I, because I know the area, I could hear where he was going. So I heard him go down towards the, the, the junction, I heard him turn right, I heard him go up to the next junction, and I heard him turn right, and within maybe six, eight seconds, he came across and, and down the main road. So they went straight in front of me. They came into the road, they turned right into the road, and at that point, as you turn in right, and, and still to this day, it's tree-lined. So you don't get a clear vision between the road and the park. But obviously I saw him, because he's got his headlights on. And he went past me, went up to the top, um, stopped, um, then at that point carried on, went down to the bottom, and this time he turned left. He turned left, up to the junction, onto the river, river road, and then that was it, I lost him again. Mm. But the, 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 next, the next point, um, again, if, if, if I go into this in too much detail, we're gonna get lost in lots of detail, but basically, I then walked from the park back towards where um, I thought the car was parked up the third time round. Like I say, I'll, yeah. I'll cut that bit out, another five minutes of cars driving round. But the car had come up, and at that point, as far as I was concerned, <clears throat> they were gonna get out of the car, and they were going to come around and find me, but they didn't. So I got out, walked back again, the car drove off. As I've come through the bushes or through the section of the trees, um, I'm now on what I would call the, the laid to lawn section. This is again about 35, 40 foot wide and it, it's long. It's, it's virtually half of the road length. So again, the length of a football pitch probably. Yeah. Now at, at that point in time, Again, I'm going, I'm going to go backwards slightly because it didn't happen this way, but the light changed. I didn't see it at the time. I, didn't, I wasn't consciously aware that the light was changing. It was only afterwards when I looked back, I thought, hang a minute, again, that wasn't right. The light must have changed because I would never have seen anything. So I'm now standing in the pitch black and I'm looking down this late uh, lawn section of uh, grass and, and probably three quarters of the way as in the length of a football pitch, I can see something in the distance and it looked like a dog. Now, when I say it looked like a dog, it looked like a dog because it was the sort of size of a dog at that yeah. distance and it was down on the ground. And that's what it appeared to be. I, I don't know what it... What, what kind, I mean, this is kind of an odd question, um, but I mean, you're at a distance, it's dark. It's what kind black. of dog, pitch black, I'm sorry. It's got the shape. You see the shape, the black shape. What kind of dog would you have thought it might have been? I mean, that's a pretty creepy story to begin with. But to even to see like a dog, uh, was it of size or was it kind it of a, just out of curiosity? It would have been of Great Dane sort of size, that sort of size. But again, yeah. like I say, I know I've just said I thought it was a dog. But the only reason I thought it was a dog is because it's the only thing that would have been that big out at night because people used to walk their dogs. It's a park. It, it, it was common to see dogs. So again, I've, I've seen this in the distance. Now forget that the lights changed. That, that's, that's just weird in itself. But, so I'm looking down and I can see what I think is a dog. I didn't panic because I'm not scared of dogs. And at that point, all I'm waiting for really is, is someone to whistle or, or someone to call the dog's name. That's what I was waiting for. So I'm, I'm continuing walking down because I'm, I'm now walking down that section to get to the other road section to see where the car's got. That's my only mission now, that's where I'm going. So I started to walk and it started to back out of the bush. Now, there was a bush on the left hand side and it separated the road and it also had a wooden rail. So what I'm looking at in the distance appeared, like I said, to be a dog on all fours, sort of with its head in the bush as I got closer, but it backed out it sort of backed out about maybe three or four foot and 
if, if you can imagine um, any person doing exactly this, then this is what it looked like. Someone on all fours, slowly shuffling backwards, maybe three or four foot, and basically standing up, pushing up from their front arms, then extending their legs, and then basically standing upright. So I've gone from looking at what I thought was a dog to now someone that's standing literally six foot tall yeah. and there in front of me, but still at a distance. So what I'm looking at now is the form of, it was clearly a man. I mean, okay, it could have been a woman, but it was, to me, it was butch. It, it was, it was tall. Um, it was big. It was human sized. It wasn't overly, oh, overly sized. But if you, if you took an average six foot tall male figure, that's what I was looking at. Um, but again, I suppose at that point, most people would have just screamed and run. But that would have been that would have been my co-host thing. He would have fallen backwards. I would have probably ran. So I just want to let you know that that's pretty as as a creep as a creep factor of about nine, Steve. You got it covered. <laughs> you got, I, I just got the hook from this. Okay, so I'm totally yeah. It's good. So that's what I'm seeing. Um, we, we start to walk and we're, we're, we're basically we're walking in a dead straight line. He's walking straight at me and I'm walking straight at him. Uh, at a certain distance that I would say probably is now less than about 30 foot, I'd say 30 to 40 foot, I can clearly make out that shadow outline. It had a hat on, it was a low brim, with a, um, a low top, sorry, with a, with a narrow brim. Um, it had what I would describe as either um, a very dense leather type jacket, um, long, again, down to the knees. Um, it had boots on. I, I saw those clearly later on, but so that's the figure. Um, and I always called it, as a kid, well, a 17 year old kid, I called it the Sandy Man because there was a bottle of port that had what? like a, pic, a picture okay. of like a black outline of a, of a man with a cape and a, okay. and a hat. Is that, would that have been about the time period? I'm gonna ask Mo this and you. Um, of a highwayman or something like that, that would have um, worn the same type <coughs> outfit. Um, I don't know. I'm just curious. I don't as, know. There's a bit to that later, um, but as he got closer, um, the the detail was a lot better, obviously, because he's getting closer to me. Bearing in mind, in theory, it's pitch black, and in theory, you can't see your hand in front of your face. I've been to this place. If I if I said. 500 times I wouldn't be lying you know I keep going back there I, I've been back there for 32 years uh, probably once a week twice a week and I go there in the evenings you know I have my kids down there and we do little experiments you know you can walk away from me in the dark and when you're 10 15 foot away I can't see you. it's that dark but anyway so I'm now 30 foot away from this guy 20 foot away from this guy I can make out that he's got a waistcoat on and I can see his boots and the boots there's a story to the boots. I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. That's quite a good, a good story. So now we're walking towards each other. And the thing that you do, don't care who you are, if you're in a situation where you're walking towards someone, you try to make eye contact. Okay. And I'm now staring into a pitch black hole. There's nothing. There's his hat. There's his coat, there's his uh, uh, collar up, he's got boots on, he's got everything on, he's got a waistcoat, and there's nothing in his face. It's completely empty. And I mean blacker than black empty. We got within about three to four feet, and we were now at a position where if one of us didn't move, we would have collided. So we did. He walked straight through me, shoulder to shoulder. So my head... He was, I estimate that even with the hat on, he would have been about six foot two, maybe yeah. six three. I mean, I'm five eight, so at 17, I was still five eight. Um, so his face would have been up to my left hand side, and his, his left shoulder would have gone through my left shoulder because we're walking straight through each other like that. So literally, half of my head went through his head. And it stayed there inside his head until he passed through me. And then I've turned virtually all the way around and he just dropped off behind me. There wasn't a fade, um, but he just sort of dropped away, just disappeared. So that was that part. And as that happened, as I turned back and started to try and regain some sort of, um, of what was going on, 
the next thing I realised was that it had gone back to the darkness that it had been like three or four minutes ago. I could now no longer see more than five foot in front of me. Yeah. So I walked out onto the main road and I'd literally got, literally just touching the, the edge of the grass and the escort come up, slammed up alongside me, the, the door flew open, Darren got out, just hailed abuse at me. Um, Audra and Jane were in the back screaming, crying their eyes out. And I got back in the car and for a, a good sort of half an hour, I was just like, okay, I ain't got a clue what just happened to me, but we went home. Okay, so the follow-up, the follow-up gets better. I know that they, they all said they never saw the tree being white, but they watched, all, all four of them watched me walk to the tree and disappear behind the tree. And then all four of them said they saw a figure walk from the tree towards the monastery. So in a completely a 90 degree angle, I was walking back to the car, yet this figure was walking. And that's what the car was doing. Darren was following it going down the road. He pulled away and stopped, pulled away and stopped, pulled away, stopped. And they watched it walk through a wall. Darren freaked out and that's when he drove off. So that in itself was quite good. The, the, the next part um, was the boots. For years, I'd had these, um, this picture of these boots, and I can only describe them as being laced boots, like from uh, the ankle to the knee, yeah? At that point, about six years ago, I was on the internet and I found a picture. And they were like, um, there's a women's fashion that's still going now, and it's like a concertina boot. It hasn't got laces, it's just like crushed leather. Yeah. And it was it was um, it was a, woman, a man's fashion around around the sort of late sixteen hundreds, early seventeen hundreds. Yeah. yeah, fascinating. But and they were the boots. So that was that was Leyland, nineteen eighty two, um, and that's why I want to get regressed <laughs> to go back. Oh, I talk, it one hundred percent makes sense why you'd want to. It's such a, to look at it from from a point of view that you've just told me, and from every single you, you've looked, you've well thought through what's happened. You've it's played on your mind to a point where you've sat there till this day, and you've said, right, okay, this has happened. This has happened. And you put it into a series of events. Now, the only question I have with the story, and again, I mean, as I said, I've known you for a long time, and I hold what you say is true. I always will. Um, I I don't associate with people who believe would falsify. I can't do that, unfortunately, because I was with the field we're in, if, if I associate myself with somebody who falsifies, it's guilt by association. Yep. So, as I said, if I if, if I believe your whole credibility in your story, which I do, um, then obviously I believe it's worth talking about. The one thing that, question, that I will question, though, is it happened so long ago. Could any of the details have been misconstrued or confused, or is it literally it etched on you? It's etched. I can replay that. I can replay that every. I've done it every single day for so, two years. Let's look at it from another, a slightly different angle, right? For what reason could you think that that chain of events had happened? What reason could you put? Could you believe that the person was on? Have you have you ever tried to analyse it? To I've, it ripped, I've ripped it to shreds. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The, the one, the one thing um, with regards to the guy that I saw, the only thing that I can possibly link, and it still doesn't really make the story any better, but escape tunnels. The reason that the reason that he was down on all fours and coming out backwards, that's the only possible thing that I could come up with. Oh, is that there may have been an escape tunnel and he'd come out of it. Maybe, maybe. But again, it's a long shot. It's a long shot. Yeah, I mean, how many? How much research have you put into this part? I mean, to the point where dating back to where you kind of run into a wall of fact, you know? I mean, to really put this together, I mean, has anyone else experienced this? Or no. has this been only kind of your thing? Um, Just curiosity, that's all. I, I can't believe that nobody else has seen it. I can't believe that nobody else has seen it. What I suspect it's like a lot of people, they won't come forward. True, true. Now, I've asked, I spoke to the church in the local parish, and, and they basically, 
you know, forget it, you know, walk away sort of thing. Um, I've contacted various groups in and around the area over 15 year, odd years now. Um, I, I sort of gave up. I've given up. Because... Steve, <laughs> just, a, just a quick question now. It's just something which has just dawned on me there. When, when you were speaking about this, when you, when you were recounting the story and Kurt said something about could there have been a modern highwayman, right? Which mm. I'm not saying it could not, have been. Not, not modern, not modern, but, but in that time in that time period mode? Of course, of course, yeah. Okay. No, but what, what I'm trying to aim for is, first things first, most highwaymen, and Kurt, this is a misconception, never liked wearing okay. a hat because if they had to get away, they good chance to lose okay. a hat. Okay, um, okay, I didn't know that. Okay. Well, here's one for you, Steve, and this, again, this is from a history standpoint as opposed to a paranormal standpoint. But if you've got a road which runs from point A to point B and something happens on that road, um, especially next to, say, for instance, a tree or something like that, right? Bear in mind, it's not hard to look up whether that road has been there for a very long time. Have you ever tried to look into that part? Yeah, yeah. The road, the road is called Abbey Road. So it's been it, there since the Abbey. Yeah, it, it dates right back. Um, I mean, it goes right back, um, 11th right. century, 12th century. Uh, it's all there. It's all documented. Um, so I, I was just thinking, if it was just a case of um, something about to do as of late myself, I'm trying to find um, a set of gallows that have gone missing from Liverpool. And what I'm doing is I'm looking at the area it was, when the road was made, and what's happened between point A and point B, what its old name was, if it had an old name. And I just it was just a, a thought that just dawned on me, is maybe sometimes looking at the area as opposed... Absolutely. Absolutely. At, not at the area, at the road it was built on, but... Yeah, I did as much as... I mean, after this happened, um, and again, yes. bearing in mind 1982, we didn't have the internet, Mo. Um, so I was down the library every day, every weekend yeah. I was down the library. I spent years in the library, but nothing really concrete. Um, obviously, the Abbey is documented. Uh, there's a monastery that is across the river in uh, Chertsey that's documented. Yeah. Um, there's even the documentation of what happened during the, um, uh, not abolition, the um, when they burnt all the uh, Christians. Uh, yeah, the river the persecution. That one, wherever it is. And yeah. they virtually flattened the whole of Leyland. It was just burnt to a cinder. Um, yeah. Only a few houses survived. Not that there was many back in them days. I, I worked it that from from the, from the dress or the, the costume, if you want to call it, that he was wearing, um, it could have been anywhere between about. It could have been anywhere between sort of like sixteen fifty and seventeen fifty ish. So if you plump in the middle and go seventeen hundred, um, that's about as near as I could get. You know, but only by the boots really. The rest of it, right. anyone could have worn. A question just appeared in the chat room. Not a question, but more of a sort of semi-statement. It's from the lunatic, who's a regular listener. Um, is Dick Turpin used to be known in that area? Question mark. Which is very again, Dick yeah. Turpin was a York lad who went down south to claim his riches and got swung for a robber a horse. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, he he would have been technically if he was in that area. Um, but again, I mean, I'm not, I, I would never, ever, ever go that far and say it was Dick Turpin. Um, who it was, I will never know to this day. Uh, yeah, so. Oh, makes sense, makes sense. Um, I, I, you, you haven't stopped right where you've, um, we're, we're just wanting to know about the story. As you said a little bit earlier, you've started looking into regression with regards to the pursuit of regression. Have you, is there any, I mean, with regression, where, where regression's concerned? Um, it, it, it actually works. Apparently, it works. Apparently, it works really, really well. Where it look at everything in your, your in your perspective, as opposed to just what you see directly in front of you. You yeah. could read something which is just not out of your field of vision, but just out of your concentrated field of vision. So it does actually have a good theory. Yeah, you... I just want to... Go on, Kate. No, I just want to follow on what you were saying. Keep going, man. My apologies. Oh, it's great, it's great. But I was just thinking, obviously, and you've gone back with more than just just the curiosity. I, I, I've, I've got this funny feeling you've gone back heavily filled with equipment and investigated the living crap out of the area. Yeah. Has anything came of that? No. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. See, nothing see at your all. problem. Nothing. <laughs> um, the, the, the problem that I have, um, and I... I the next bit is the bit that I missed out, which makes it even worse. Do you remember what time I said I got to the, the road? Yes. 12 o'clock. Now, if you was to come with me down to Laylam 
and you was to do the walkthrough that I've just explained. Uh -huh. Get out of the car, walk to the tree, come back to the car, go to the park, come back, walk through the man, car turns up. I've done that, and I've done it, again, if I said a hundred times, I wouldn't be lying. And I can't do it in more than about 15 to 18 minutes, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. You know, I can sort of linger a little bit longer on the bench in the, in the park, and I can make a little bit of a slower walk, but 15 to 18 minutes. We got there at 12 o'clock, and, and everyone said that. Audra, Jane, they knew exactly what time they were there, because like I said, we normally drop them home between 12 and midnight. So the mm -hmm. time, within reason, was verified at around about five past 12, let's say. 15 to 18 minutes. Do you know what time the car turned up? Go for it. 10 past one. Right, now back to my next point, right? And this, see if I can wear this without sounding like an absolute nutball. <laughs> Which is totally impossible because <laughs> not not into not into your story when I say totally no no what I'm saying is towards right okay imagine for let's just say for for saying sake right that everything supernatural paranormal fringe whatever you want to call it occultist every single thing holds weight holds credence so everything from ufology right the way down to um, Loch Ness monster okay yeah. believe in the word time slip for instance you yep. have spent a lot of time there you you you've chased that walk in 15 minutes in the past you've done it numerous occasions in 15 minutes it took you a hell of a lot longer than 15 minutes to do the walk yep. when it happened somebody crawls out of something backwards doesn't fade away but disappears are we thinking apparition or are we thinking something totally different again uh, like i say I've, I've been there ripped it to shreds um the, the, this the, the i can deal with him I can deal with him either as an apparition that was there, that walked through me, or I can deal with it as time slip and that for whatever reason, I just happened to, whatever, I've just gone into his time. There's two things that I can't deal with. One is why didn't he have a face? And two, why could I see the tree that was lit up like a Christmas tree and nobody else could see it? That's what kills me. If you take those out of the equation, and yeah. just leave yourself with the ghost as such. That's have it. You, you... Have you talked to anybody that um, I know specializes in it? Because I've had time. I've had. I've been used. I've done it before, and I, I I didn't get much out of it. And that's just me. That I'm just too knuckle. I'm just too much of a knucklehead. But I'll be honest about that. But um, do you have anybody lined up that you feel would suit your needs? to take yourself back to that time? You have it all lined up ready to go yet? or are you um, That part is in the pipeline. But again, because you're now totally dependent on that person's skill to regress sure. you and then drag that information out. I mean, obviously, once we get to that stage, I will give him as much as I possibly can so that he can add that detail to try and drag more detail out of me. But... Um, I don't, no, I don't think any one person would be any better at doing this. Although, like I said, I looked at it a few years back, and at that point in time, it was just people that were advertising that they could do it um, and that they could cure you, so they could regress you, tell you not to smoke anymore. Oh, God. But, yeah, 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 again. Um, but no, no. Give me a second, sorry, guys. Mo's if, having a dog fight issue going on there. He's, <laughs> that's how he makes his money. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's the whole thing. If, if we can get that hooked up and, and get that done, um, I know it's not going to it's not gonna make a blind bit of difference to, to me in as far as I know what happened because I was there, but I want to find out if they can drag more information out. If you, if you ever thought about, you know, when I do research in history, I cross-reference everything. I just don't use one source. I go multiple sources, and those sources can't stem from your, an original source. Now, if you can get multiple people to do it, I know I know money's an issue, and I'm, I understand that. Money will always be an issue. But at the same time, what one person might be able to pull out of you, another one might not at the same time. Absolutely. It's an idea. That's all. That's the, yeah. I mean, like I say, I haven't had it done yet, so it would be really, really fascinating to find out what they can pull out of that night. Right, okay, well, give me a second. 
I'm sure I know somebody down south who does um, regressions. You know, I am. Oh my god! I'll I'll wreck my brain for it. I'll find out who it is. If there's somebody local, mm. um, they're doing me a favour if it, if it comes to. It. <laughs> but I mean, the one thing that. Oh, I, I I I love it. I love the story. I love not no offense. I know it's not exactly something you should love, and I'm I'm pretty sure you don't sit there and have anniversaries for it. But, but. No, I know it's going to sound stupid, but I'm actually proud that it happened. No, you you can't buy that. You no, can't of course, buy that of experience. Course. I mean, you've experienced that somebody. You've experienced something that somebody unfortunately will never experience. And do you know what? Can I give you my honest opinion? Yeah, and it's strange as an opinion. I don't believe you've seen a ghost. Yeah, see, I'm still open-minded as to whether it yeah. was a ghost or whether I crossed into time. It's it's not the circumstance of you seeing something and passing through something that I'm struggling with. It's the fact of how you've seen that materialise in the first place, which was backwards crawling out and then standing up. Yep. Like, it's taking itself from somewhere, bringing itself to somewhere, to put itself in your way for you to have an experience and then disappear straight afterwards. So whatever happened, happened as a, in a chain of events, it happened as you've seen it start, you then interacted, and then once the interactions happened, it stopped. Mm. So from an outsider's point of view, I don't believe it was a ghost. I do believe something, something happened, whether you want to call it an echo, whether you want to call it a time slip, whatever you would like to put as a, as a classification on it, but with a, with a ghost, it's something which, uh, if it's, it's residual, it's, it's different. With, if the residual, if it's a ghost. Yeah, yeah. yeah, again, in as far as, I suppose we loosely term things as ghosts, yeah, because yeah. Well, that's yeah, that what other people true. see. Right. It, the, the, again, going back to what I said, which was, it didn't have a face. Now, if it had had a face, or a skeleton as a face, or something as a face, again, it would have made it more <laughs> of a ghost. But it didn't. It didn't have a face. I could have put my hand into his face. It was pitch black. There was nothing in there at all. What Absolutely. was? What was after this all happened? And I know it probably took you a long time to go. Hold on. I just experienced what? And you're still at that point. I mean, what did? I mean, it, it, what was your initial reaction right after it happened? I mean, because you know we have that natural fight or flight syndrome, and what? What did you just did you just go or did you mm. just stop and think and say wow? I just I just stood there. I just stood there for about again about five five or six seconds and it was just numb. It was just completely numb. I was like, oh wow, <laughs> what the what the hell was that? You know, I knew what it was. I knew yeah. I knew what it was, but I didn't know what it was. Well, okay. Here's a question for you. Mm. Um, Bit of a again, a bit of a weird question, but for you, you went through the situation of something walking up towards you, walking through you, and passing to the other side. Yep. What, if anything, did you feel at that point? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely so is literally nothing. not. Did it feel like nothing nope. felt like it passed through you? No cold, no nothing. Nothing. Absolutely, Absolutely nothing. nothing. No contact. No contact. It was there was no contact. There was no. Temperature change. There was no. Oh my God! I've just walked through something. There was yeah, nothing. No it was just no and out the other side. That's like I say, the, 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 the freaky bit was the no face. Yeah. Why could I... you see a solid body? I mean, okay, I know it wasn't solid, but it was solid yeah. enough that I could see the buttons. I could see his waistcoat. I could see the the edge of his collar. I could see his hat, but nothing in his face. So it's weird. It's like everything that you could see. Of the person was non was theoretically non biological, so yeah. with the clothes, the fabrics, and everything Correct. else that was biological, you couldn't see. Yeah, that's fascinating. That. Do you know what the worst part for me is? I'm one of those overly analytical persons who will sit there and play an event. So, first things first. Thank you very much for keeping me awake tonight while I sit here <laughs> till three in the morning and try and work out what the hell you came across. Um, but. I, I like that. I really like the concept of that because everybody who we've ever spoke to in the past with regards to the paranormal, um, especially with regards to sightings, what they have a tendency of doing is they go, I was in ours, I got up, went to the toilet, somebody stood there, wet myself, went back to bed, fell asleep. The story is a point A, or a, 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 a stimulus and a response basically. If something happens, they respond. Whereas with you, it was a chain of events. 
and it's it's just far more complicated than the standard so, so yeah, it, experience. It's an or it's very organized sounding. And that's what we don't get a lot of. We don't get yeah, the organization of the process. <laughs> and it comes well, down, just going, uh, we're just going back. Like, just going back a second. Um, again, if you look at the, the the all the points that just sound ridiculously stupid, the other one is where the four people in the car couldn't see me coming back from the tree, yet they watched what they called they called it a nun, but it could be anything. They said it had a white hat on, so we called it we called it a nun. Yeah. Walk towards the wall and disappear through a wall. And then the tree? The tree. The poor tree is gone now, by the way. <laughs> Oh. Back in, do you remember? What, well, you wouldn't, you wouldn't know, but um, sorry, uh, Kurt wouldn't know. But do you remember the bad storms we had about ten, ten years ago? We had some really bad storms. Yeah, yeah, we got destroyed. It, it sort of, it went about. <laughs> it started to lean over a little bit. And yeah. last year, I came around the corner as I do every couple of weeks or every week to have a look at the tree, and yeah. it was on its back and it had been chopped up. <laughs> So I lost a friend. <laughs> yeah, what to say? And you were just sitting there, like, looking sad by this tree. <laughs> Come back. Well, okay, is it worth? And again, I'm not 100 percent sure on whether you've tried this in the past, or is it worth grabbing a metal detector and going for a little scout round? I would. Um, I would. Uh, I was probably there with the metal detector by the second week. <laughs> okay. Because I had, I was seventeen years old. I'd had a metal detector since I was about fourteen. 15, Brilliant. Brilliant. And exactly where he was, because I knew exactly where he was sitting when I first saw him. I went round and I scanned that area for hours and hours. A couple of days, I went back there again. Like I did it again. Um, there's nothing. There was nothing there. And there's not. It was just, shot. So there's nothing. There's nothing significant about the date. There's nothing significant about the time. That's fascinating. That's. That's gonna ruin my sleep tonight. Not for a scare, not in a, not in a scary way. I won't, I won't lie. No, it's never scared. It's never scared me. It didn't no. scare me at the time. Um, this is fascinating, and I can't get to grips with it. And that's why I want to do the regression to go back. Now it's weird because people, whenever we've spoke to people, and again, I'll be the same person, the same as Carol. If you see something, um, whether it's out on investigation or again, whether it's when you're down by Halley with a girl, just saying that was kind of. Uh, 17 year old thing to do you. We are that on board, but that's okay. Creep. <laughs> no, well played, well played. But especially in a Mark on Escort, that's how you get the girl on. But um, uh, when you're in a situation where something puts itself in front of you, whether it be uh, an apparition or something, I can imagine most people would have a different response. So everybody says, oh my god, I'd run away and I'd scream. And probably 85% of the planet wouldn't run away and scream. They'd probably just go, "What the hell was that?" That's that. That's the. That's the way. Especially, I think that that, that that's the. Um, that's the theory I would have if I ever seen it. Then I'd be more what? What was that? So I can understand your your response, but a lot of people's response, a lot of people would be totally and utterly different towards it. Now, just a just a quick one before we go any further. A lunatic in the chat room's just said XR3I. LMAO. No, not an XR3i. <laughs> XR3i was a Mark II Escort, not a Mark. <laughs> there your car. Jesus. <laughs> go faster stripes. No. Did it have go faster stripes? No. <laughs> was it in Mexico or was it just. No, no, it was just a bog standard. Like, was it 1.6, wasn't it, in them days? Yeah, yeah, it was 1.6, yeah. 1.8, and then, then Mexico yeah. won it. Well played. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, I, again, I, 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 I like the. Again, back to the story. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna look straight into it. But to move slightly away from the story a little bit, more towards you. Since the last time we've talked, you've, you've worked alongside groups, and now you've gone more towards the independent, yeah, investigating. Yeah. Now, do you want to talk a little bit about that? How you, how, how you find it? Um, I think like anyone, um, when they've never experienced a group, um, the initial part of the group. It's, it's, it's exciting in its own way because yeah. I think for the first time um, you get a lot of opportunity to go to places where you wouldn't get to go to if you was just out and about on your own. You know, there's just places you can't get to. Um, you you get invites to places, um, especially you get invites uh, to possibly people's residence, uh, so to home visits as such. 
um, you know, the, they're not the sort of things you're just going to stumble across and stumble into. Yeah. Um, so the initial part of being in a group, it does open your eyes. Um, it's, it's, it can be, I want to find the right word, but I don't think I'm going to find the right word. Um, it's actually quite daunting because unfortunately you can normally tell within about maybe 15 minutes that there's something perhaps not quite right in the house, but it's not actually the house's fault and it's the person that lives there or, or two or pe two or more people that live there yes. um, in, in some way deluded. Um, not for any bad reason. Um, you know, I've been to a few where you just feel so sorry because the family are so distraught. You know, they're at their wit's end, but they've got someone in the house, an elderly relative, um, that's just lost the plot. And they think they're being... You know what I mean. You, you know exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. So you have to be very... You have to learn to, to be very, um, very sensitive. And if you're not that way inclined, then you shouldn't be doing it. Um, and I did come across a few people that um, I didn't like their attitude. Um, mm -hmm. You know, straight away, this, this is a human being. I don't care if that human being has gone out of their trolley. But at the end of the day, they're still a human being. They still deserve respect. So if you can't give that person respect, then don't do this job. You know, or, not that it's a job, um, yeah. because none of us... It's not a job, is it? We don't do it as a, yeah, as yeah. a job. You're never going to get paid. There's, doing this. there's a lot of time and effort put into it, though. I mean, yeah. I mean, whether it's whether it's putting, you know, setting up tech or anything else. And I'm looking at Mo on that one. I've, I've heard horror stories from him. I mean, it it, it just tends to, uh, you know, it does. It, it almost becomes a. It's it's one of those places, jobs, where you sit 99.9% .9 of the time and nothing will happen. Absolutely. Kind of like my work, where I work at a supposed haunted museum. Yeah, 99.9% .9 of the time, I've not experienced anything. And then that one time, you're like, that was kind of strange, but I wouldn't say paranormal. Yeah. But what was that? You know, so I mean, I look at it like that. Yeah. And then you've got, not only have you got the actual, um, like you say, there's a, there's a bit of kit set up, but it's the hours of reviewing afterwards. You, know, you can go out for six hours, but it will take you 12 hours to review that. Sometimes it will take you a whole week, two weeks to go back over it and document mm -hmm. it. You know, um, one night can cost you literally a couple of weeks sitting there for yeah. hours on end till three o'clock in the morning with the heads headphones on, you know, oh. <laughs> detailing what's going on. I mean, it's hard work. <laughs> that's, that's my life. I'll sit there on a bus and whenever we go anywhere, I'll grab all the EDP, I'll save it through onto my phone, I'll throw my headphones on and I'll sit there on the bus or if I'm ever walking anywhere and I'll have my headphones on. I could be walking down the road and people must look <laughs> people must look at me as if to say, What the hell? I'll just sit there and I'll hear something and go, Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> like, but Mo but Mo's like the that tech oriented kind of guy. Yeah. Are, are you that tech oriented kind of guy too, Steve? Um, to be honest, no. Um, to be honest, um, I started to get involved in the tech side, but then as far as I'm concerned, um, the majority of people can can do what we do with very limited amount of tech as far as i'm concerned yeah, um, as, long, as long as you've got a, a decent quality um audio recorder of some kind um you know i mean over here 50 60 70 pounds 80 pounds will get you a good one um, um some kind of speaker device to enhance um some kind of radio as in i know we use sp7s but um something like that, uh, a camcorder, cheap camcorder. And the only reason I really use my camcorder is to film myself doing what I'm doing so I can go back to that and verify where I was, particularly in a graveyard, because in a graveyard you might do, I don't know, 50 graves. So yeah. it's nice to be able to see that grave to document who was next door at the time. So if you're standing next to Elsie and suddenly you hear Fred talking on the right-hand side, you can sort of you can work out if that was Fred but, or not. And, 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 that, and that goes back to the best thing about the UK. that I love doing all these shows when we had guests, guests on from the UK. It, 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 it's, it's how old things are. We don't appreciate that in the United States. Yeah. How old. And it wasn't until I got to uh, work with Mo. And who's a, who's a history geek himself? And uh, no offense, well, yes, total offense, but you yeah. but you're good at what you do. So anyhow, he um we were just history people, and it's a, it blows my mind when you're talking, you know, 14th, 15th centuries, and century. You're not talking. You're talking Native American over here, who nobody has a clue who was set where, who was set where. It wasn't 
it doesn't have like the organization that the you know that the Western Hemisphere quite has hadn't hit us yet. But it's interesting though. That's what's great about the UK and everything else. Of course, of course. Now, just a quick one. I'm sorry for taking um, the mic off you for a second, but do we have a question coming into the chat room for you, Steve? Um, do you have much experience within EVP? Do I have experience within EVP? Um, I suppose the honest answer is yes, but then now you've got to look at that in as far as my mindset at yes. the time that I heard that EVP, take into context what was there at the time um, and how it was recorded. Um, we've got a couple in the background um, that to me are classics, um, but I still have to sit on the fence and struggle a bit with the capture of the EVP. Um, the two best ones that we had, unfortunately, were both on sweep on the SB7. Although the SB7 was completely and utterly flat. Uh, it was actually at Canorden uh, in the castle, uh, in the graveyard. And you're a million miles from nowhere. And you, we, we sat there for hours before we went down there. And it was just completely flat. You couldn't pick up anything. And we took a group, um, we took a group out uh, of, of about five people. It was like three girls and two guys. And we took them out into the graveyard. And we were trying to explain to the group basically how we operate, how we use simple kit, as in voice recorders, uh, explain what an SB7 was, uh, explain that you didn't have to use that, but blah, blah, blah. And I'd called out, there's a lot, there's a hell of a lot to this story, but the best one was I called out and Andy, who's with me, called out and said, look, if there's anybody else out there that wants to talk, please feel, free, please feel free to do so. And straight back came the words, we don't. And it was just so loud. And everyone just freaked out. <laughs> Did you record uh, this? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's on YouTube. Just you go to YouTube and, and type in, um, we don't. Yeah, no, I, think, I think you might have said that right? years ago. Yeah, that's just classic. Cool. It was just, but again, context. Um, we were there. I knew it was live. I could yeah. hear it coming through. Um, there was some other stuff that we had on there that night um, oh, can at I previous re events. Can I reiterate an EVP story? Mm -hmm, yeah, go for it. Please let me do it. Right. I've got a, we had a member in our team. Um, the gentleman's an author. He's a very good friend. I've known him for about 15, 16, well, just on 20 years. Um, nice guy. Really warm-hearted individual. And he was trying to get into the paranormal. He was trying to get into investigating. So I said, come with us. We'll give you your... Um, We'll give you we'll give you a free roam, do what you need to do. And he, he was like the first thing he wanted to do was EVP. So we passed him a voice recorder. Bear in mind, right? There's a there's a hint in the in the word, author. Okay. Got away with words, this guy. And he stands there with the voice recorder. He disappears. We say, listen, go on your own. Come back when you're ready. About 25 minutes later, he comes back, and we're sitting there. My friend's got, who was who drove us there. He's got a big, massive people carrier, a big, massive Citroen Picasso. It's got an auxiliary in on the dashboard, so you can plug audio directly in. So we grab the voice recorder, plug it into the dashboard, so it's coming through all the speakers. So I'm waiting for this. The usual is anybody there? Is <laughs> anything like that? You remember this, don't you, Kate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm waiting for all this. I'm waiting for this conversation of like, if you're there, tap once for yes or tap 12 times for no or something like that. And all I get is, from a dying man to a dead man, I've been yearning to ask you. <laughs> we're there, we're there, we're there. There's a pause for about four seconds and then I heard, how are you? And the second I heard him say, how are you? I just pushed stop. I was like, are you, oh my God, are you kidding me? <laughs> oh dear me! What have you been watching? And I, I, I was in, I was in pleat. I mean, I, I, I couldn't stop laughing. And he was in the back going, "What? I don't know what you're laughing at." <laughs> he, was just, he, he literally, in fifteen seconds, turned into Edgar Allan Poe. And I was like, "Oh, you that's awesome!" Typical author. You absolute typical author. I, I, I would have asked nothing less of him. I love the guy. I really do. But when I heard that, I just sort of cringed. It was amazing. But Going back to um, back to EVP again. Okay. Um, as far as I'm aware, I've not got anything that I would actually come to anybody and say, 
there you go, there's proof positive that I can listen to the other side or, or I can listen to people from the other side talking to me. The, the mm -hmm. problem that I have is with the SB7. Now, I know everyone's used it, um, people still rave about it, but I, st I still can't use it with any real scientific, because it's a, a reverse sweep on a radio and it's going to pick up sounds. Yeah. But yet, but yet, when I've been using it in context, I've had some absolute <clears throat> blinders. The one, the one questionable thing me and Kate talked about, uh, we had a conversation, I think it was today, either yesterday yeah. or today, was about most audio detuned equipment. Its job, sole purpose job, is to listen to what frequencies are out there. But when you bear in mind that some of the frequencies we've got out there are between 26 megahertz and 5.8 gigahertz, so that's 26 megahertz to 5,800 megahertz. That's a massive range. That's only standard. That's not quite military or anything like that. Yep. But so much frequency out there. You've got a radio which is told its sole purpose. It's like its, it's, it's sole purpose is to listen to frequencies and yep. then you detune it so that apparently it can't, but then it picks up radio frequencies anyway. I, I sort of used to struggle with that, um, and I've never owned uh, SB7, SB11, and I've detuned radios for my own experiments. I've got two upstairs that I detuned together, and I ran them next to each other, and I, it, again, me being a geek, done everything I needed to do, got them set up, ran them next to each other, and you're pulling the same frequency, the same blips at the same time. So what I was doing was, as they were scanning through, I'd try and get as close to the radio station as I could see on the screen, 96 or 95, yeah. write it down. And then once I was done and dusted, I grabbed one which was still tuned and went to it. And it's still a frequency, it was still a radio station. So what it was doing, it was picking up residual radio stations. And that, that, that was my own, that's my own opinion. Now I'm not saying that not, you should never go out and buy this equipment. If that's where you want to pursue, you go for it. Um, please don't take it and I say it's got to. But what I do think, Mo, is... I think a lot of people out there um, are going more towards the SB7 or the 11 um, and using it as gospel and not just taking even like an old-fashioned <clears throat> mini recorder, yes. you know, with the mini recorder, putting that in because I like to do that and just use side A, take it out so there's no bleed through, so, and run it with a, uh, another recorder. But And I've used the SB7, and I've... I've only come once, I can say, it kind of morphed into something that I was like, whoa, hold on a second, this is strange. But at yeah. the same time, I, I think people see it again, it goes again on what's on TV, is that the coolest thing to buy? Every time on TV they pick up some sort of voice where it's pareidolia, where your mind's playing tricks on you. And I, and, and I think that's kind of, I mean, if you want to use it, use it, you know? But oh, don't... Yeah. I don't go out there and, you know, throw it out like it's gospel. And that's the only kind of thing I'm picky about is when yeah. people use that as gospel. No, you, no matter what field you ever you ever end up in, if it's paranormal or as in the chat room has proven so far, car racing because everybody that's just got onto true. a conversation yeah. on cars. Who am I to judge? It's, it's a chat room, say what you've got to say. <laughs> but you're going to get people in there who are going to say, run a car with a turbo, run a car with a big engine run a car with this. Everyone's got their own different thing that they yeah. would use. But they're all going towards the same popular destination. So regardless to whether you use the most technology, science, spiritualism, whether you want to use two pieces of metal that cross over when you go over water, go for it. Yeah, I'm why not? Not, I'm, I cannot say to you, don't do it. It's not my place. It's not my place to to say anything with regards to how you decide you want to do what you do. My only suggestion is just do what you want to do. If it if it pulls your results, go for it. If you want yeah, to go yeah. out and buy the Echo Vox, do it. Mm. By all means. If you want to go and buy a Ghost Ark, do it. By all means. If you want to go and buy any other money and throw it down the drain, I'm not going to stop you. I'm not yeah. saying that the Ghost Ark is money that you throw down the drain because that's... That's a little thing. different. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, go back to go oh. back to what... Um, Going back to what Kurt said earlier, um, yeah. I think that's actually now, because I've done it for these years, um, I've watched other guys, I've listened to you guys, you've listened to me, you know, yeah, I've yeah. been around the block a few times, and now I seriously won't look at using any kit other than basically voice recorders, because as far as I'm concerned, although I've got some brilliant hits, 
I, but I can't put them down on yeah. paper and say, this is real. Now, okay, can I then turn on that voice recorder? And if I get a good EVP on that, can I just turn around and say, that's real? I don't know. You know, you know <laughs> but it, it would a, sound better to me yeah. than possibly a voice coming out of a detuned radio going fast forward backwards, you know, or whatever it's doing. It's, it, it's hard, but no, kit-wise, video, cam, video camcorder, purely... So it documents what you're doing uh -huh. and yeah. a voice recorder. I mean, even a K2. I mean, we've all got K2s. I don't use those anymore. It's just a flashing light. Yeah. I'm, I'm I mm -hmm. All I ever take on investigation, if I ever go on investigation, I take a hell of a lot of cameras because I've only got one set of eyes. Why not have a few other vantage points? Can't yeah. hit. I do run CCTV, but that's only to... It sounds weird. Last time I used CCTV in investigation, its sole purpose for me to run CCTV in investigation was to cover the front door of the place uh -huh. we were investigating because we had permission to be there, but other people like to use it for urban exploration. So are, I like, you, nope. are you are you looking at that though, Mo, as being CCTV? And we had this discussion with another guest, and I forget who who it was. It is is that becoming a little outdated in a sense? I mean, is there a reason why you're going? Yeah, there's a, there is a reason why people are disappearing away from, like, for instance, CCTV and all that. And you know what it is? It's the sole purpose of ghost adventures. It's because what they have a tendency of doing is people will, they will, I don't know, they'll grab a, the newest piece of equipment and the old piece of equipment gets pushed to the back. So when the new people start out, they don't get CCTV. They go and buy themselves a thermal camera. They go and buy themselves 12 connects because apparently that will work. Um, GoPro is the way to go. That's that's gospel. That's that's for me. Gospel. Buy buy five GoPros and only use one. That's the way yeah, to do it. That's, that's all I gotta say. We well, could always do what I do: <laughs> buy six or seven video cameras, convert them all to full spectrum and night vision, and then never use them. <laughs> yeah. I do. Or buy yourself four DSLR cameras and only use one, because the other three <laughs> are scratched. <laughs> buy yourself action cams. Put them yeah. back in the box. Give yep. them to your son. <laughs> do, you many, do, do you know how many walkie-talkies I've got? I got four. I've got nine. Separate. Nine walkie-talkies. You got know nine walkie walkie-talkies. Hold on, hold on. Let me repeat this again. Mo does have walkie-talkies that the people who are watching, believe it or not, I blew this blew my mind when I heard this. He's got walkie-talkies. You're supposedly supposed to register with the government. They're that strong. Yeah, yeah. No. I've got to have an Ofcom license for the set of my talkies. <laughs> they've got a, they've got a stupid range. But you know what? Right? The own the, the walkie talkies were so powerful. These ones that I, I was using at the time, that when I passed it to our lead investigator at the time, he pushed the button to shout to me to ask me, was I banging on a pipe? And when he pushed the button, it went to broadcast. It turned the lens off on the camera that was filming, and you can actually see the video disappear and then clink back into place. I was like, <laughs> I'm not using them for that. That's dangerous. That's creepy, man. That's creepy, dude. Oh, it's the story of my life. <coughs> but yeah, again, two connects. Don't use them. Fully wired, so I can just put them whatever. Don't use them. We did have a question come in the chat room, by the way. Well, I'll, I'll finish my rant and I'll ask the question now. Um, what do you think about ghost boxes? I see people use them on YouTube videos, but they pick up too many radio signals. Um, Bigfoot UK, we've just been talking about that, by the way, which is, again, the PSB7. So sorry, we've already covered that one. <laughs> but yeah, um, I'm rant over, rant over. I am going to move on to a slightly different subject, which is a bit more light-hearted. Um, something we ask every single guest, and you are not exempt from this question, and you have to answer honestly. I don't care how embarrassing it is. What is the most embarrassing thing that has ever happened to you on investigation? Uh oh, he's doing that face. Can you see his face? I'll do um, one. I suppose, in all fairness, it was something really, really stupid. Um, it was um, myself and another member of the team, and we were up in, oh God, where were we? Um, we were a long way from here. Um, and <laughs> it was, cut a long story short, the guy owned a pub. Uh, he'd locked the pub off. It was one o'clock in the morning, whatever it was. Really old site. And uh, he bought the chip shop next door and he knocked through. So you could go from behind the bar in the main pub and you could go round the back and then into the chip shop. 
Well, so we'd, all, we, we'd all split up. We had some upstairs, some downstairs, and me and the other member had gone out into the chip shop. Yeah. <laughs> all the lights were dimmed, and we were standing by one of the friars, and we'd done all of our ground tests, we'd done everything, and we were just calling out. And suddenly, I looked at him, and he looked at me, and it was just one of those death stares. We're going, oh, shit. What is that? What's that voice? And we were getting closer to each other's faces going, shit, can you hear that? Can you hear that? Miming, obviously, we were miming. I'd accidentally turned one of my other recorders on, and all you could hear was the noise bleeding out from my other set of speakers. <laughs> oh, yes. It was funny at the time. I mean. Oh, right. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I've gone through this phase of, of always telling people what my embarrassing one is, but my embarrassing one's been well played out by now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the embarrassing one of a team member of mine. Um, we went on an investigation in Bigfoot's UK82 in the chat room. You're Liverpool. You're, you're a scouser. You, you'll know this. A lunatic, you may know it as well. Um, next to our cathedral, we have um, an old cemetery called St. James's Walk. Now, St. James's Walk um, used to be a cemetery. They flattened it down. They've turned it into a nice park. All they've done is laid the stones flat and let you walk across them. And um, we were in there. We always used to go there to test equipment whenever we got equipment. So I had the voice recorders, the cameras set up. I think, Natalie, were you with us in St. James's Walk when Adam was there? Boxes. Yeah. So, yeah, my wife was there and me... Me lead investigator at the time, his wife was with him, or his, his, um, his fiance was with him, and we're all sitting there, we're all setting up, and the next minute, lead investigator, bear in mind, went through military cadets, tried to get into the military, couldn't, done security, the guy's a bruiser, he's a bit of an, he's like the big Irish angry guy, and the next minute, we're setting up, he literally goes, and just stops, like a rabbit in the headlight, I'm like, what's up, he's like, over there, I can see eyes. I'm like, okay. So I grab the. I've got. A, I've got a night vision camera. I spun it round. It's got something like a forty-five time zoom. So I zoomed right in as deep as I could, straight out of the um, night vision range, and just did so I can only see reflection. And lo and behold, there's eyes. I can see two eyes staring at us. So I'm looking. I'm like, that's weird. He's got no. It's eyes, and he's really getting rattled. You can see him getting really stressed. I'm like, what's going on? He's going. We need to go. We, we can't be here, we need to go. That's a bad omen. It, we, we, we need to go, we need to go. So we decided, no. No, I'm not having it, no. Shine your torch. It was a fox. The entire investigation was nearly called off because of a cute little itty bitty tiny baby fox. And he really went <laughs> into little baby girl mode. Oh, um, with this, does anybody really do far even has decided to use even go... Somebody's just put in the chat room called Jewel, Julie K. I just put in the <coughs> chat room. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Has anybody really been far even as decided to use even go want to want to do look more like? What? What? Dude, if you can't finish it, let's no, go. I, 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 I think they're rapping. That's all I, I think. Why not? It makes sense to somebody. It makes sense to them. As long as it makes sense to them. Yeah, tell please, them can, tell, please tell Julie them K, can you, can you reiterate K that? Rich. So that I, way when I get busted doing a uh, freaking <laughs> ladder with my girlfriend, that uh, we got someone to bail us out. That's what I want to know, man. Yeah, you need... Yeah, oh, I love it. I love it. So, nevertheless, that's my embarrassment. Um, you turned the walkie-talkie on. Uh, uh, voice recorder on in your pocket. Kate's entire investigations are always something. Will all I mean? So, I gotta admit, I'm not. I don't claim. I get myself in stupid ass trouble for being stupid. You know, I am good at it. You know, you gotta be good at something. So, um, what Mo and I like to call brick and ladder investigation, in short, in America, is breaking and entering. But you do it in a special way where you don't get busted. You're not burglarizing a house. You go into an older house. Kind of urban investigation. And um, I've gotten caught twice. Once on an asylum and once um, on a battleground, Civil War battleground. 
and had to show the cop my ID and stuff like that. So I want some phone numbers of anybody out there, or my girlfriend can collect some phone numbers. So that way we got some rich people to bail us out if we ever get ourselves in some stupid trouble. So I'm going to ask Mo to bail us out because Mo would just laugh at me. They'd be like, dude, no way in hell that would happen. I eat just put his finger in my mouth. So um, that's that's about. I've got embarrassing stuff, but I've already said pretty much most of the stuff. No, sorry for interrupting, guys. Um, I'm just looking into what that GDK sent, right? And what, what does it that is, mean? It's a, me it's a meme, right? And what it is is. How's she sending a meme for? It's all right. Has anyone really been far even as decided to use even go what to do more like? And it's off creepy pasta from five months ago. Um, That's creepy. That's got a creepy sounding. Basically, uh, I don't understand it. It's just it's one of those mad random mishmash of Rant. letters which apparently make something. So I'll give them that. Well, well played to Julie. Well Kate. done. Well done. Well done. Julie. If you really hugged us, um, if you did, cool. I, I honestly don't understand if you did or didn't. So I don't. Uh, I, I I don't either. I, I, don't I, I do definitely believe that made Steve, that meme doesn't spoke good England. It, it's it's Steve's look in the other direction. Steve's <laughs> trying to figure out, going, what happened to me that one night? While well, Mo's <laughs> trying to figure out the meme, and I'm sitting there listening to Mo in the meme, and I'm watching Steve on the screen. No, the weirdest part, is? No, the weirdest part is if you were to dig deep into Steve's brain, Steve's still trying to play over what happened that night. <laughs> Was it, what was it? I'm trying to read what the hell that's saying, right? I'm and I'm listening to you. And I'm going kid, like, if you were to cut Kate's brain open, you'd just see a monkey with tambourines <coughs> and banging the tambourines. Oh, whatever, dude. Whatever, dude. Just because you're 5'4", that's what you stand at. I tell you what, and we already talked about that. Yep, yeah, the middle yeah, finger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mo cool. is only 5'4", ladies and gentlemen. He's yeah, taller yeah. than what he is, but he is... He, He's a tiny little guy. We yeah. use him as a measuring stick for snow. So, you know, that's how he makes it to the states all the time. Yeah. Draw lines across. Yeah, stick to Yeti's cans. Anyway, Steve, <laughs> before we go, because we're coming to the end of the show. Now, have you got anything you'd like to plug or anything you've got coming up? No, because I don't, I don't do anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> you really can't. Just if, I, if, if I ever write a book, I'll let you know. <laughs> just do me a favour, then, right? When you when you've came to the conclusion, or when you come to more of a conclusion about what's happened with regards to the event, can you please let us know? We'll keep obviously we'll keep everybody informed who asks about it. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. Like I say, if I can get this set up, then um, then yeah, we'll we'll put I, it up on I the need show. to work. I need to work out so I know down that side there's regression, so I'll look into that part. Yeah, no, please do. Yeah, I mean, if we can get two guys to do it, then two's, you know, better than one. Yeah, it's, it's again, it's a, it's a blanket of, um, it's, it's just more opinions, basically, so yeah, it'll absolutely. come in more useful. But absolutely. nevertheless, right, well, we're coming to the end of it, so again, Steve, it's been really nice speaking to you again. It's been a while. Thank you, Mark. Yes. Far, far too long, so. <laughs> Again, I'm, I'm glad you came back on, but thank you. Thank, thank you very you much, guys. Well. And everybody in the chat room, again, have a great day. Julie Kate, thanks for whatever the hell you sent me. <laughs> thanks. Brenda appeared, which I'm really surprised and happy about. She uh, never... she, oh, Brenda, i got to send the shoes as soon as I get them out. i got a pair of cursed shoes i got to get out. Ah, Brenda, Brenda sent some shoes. Um, that's because Kurt, Kurt, supposedly. I don't see, know. what happens is Kate is really, really into wearing girls.